Rajiv Jayadevan, do you think that the debate about whether people should get a right to choose what vaccine they want, a COVID shield or co-vaccine is a fair one or it's something that people need not worry about? I do not believe there is any need to worry about the choice between vaccines. Both the vaccines that are available in our country are excellent. Why do I say that? Because if you look at the fundamentals of vaccines, what are they for? COVID-19 causes problems because humanity has not been exposed to this virus. All that vaccines are doing mm. are to provide an introduction to the virus. And all vaccines do it in different languages. They're all constructed slightly differently, so there will be technical differences which are much discussed in social media, and this confuses people. But in the end, all that vaccines do is to get our immune okay. system ready in case this virus inf infects us in the future. So that being said, all okay. the mainstream vaccines are excellent at preventing mm. severe disease, and that is what we want to prevent. Dr. Jayadevan, stay with me because our show is really about being the voice of the ordinary people. Let me also try and get a sense from people here. So, you tell me, the COVID vaccines are going on with COVID. Have you come to a patient? No, my son is admitted here. You are admitted here, but where are you from? From Punjab. From Punjab? Yes. How much is your knowledge about the COVID vaccines? No knowledge. No knowledge? No. लेकिन जो दो तरह के वैक्सीन हैं न्यूज़ चैनल्स में दिखाए जा रहे हैं इनके बारे में कोई सूचना नहीं मिली है नहीं मैम अभी कुछ नहीं पता है हमें कुछ नहीं पता है आप कहाँ से हैं मैं यूपी से आगरा 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 से हैं आप लोगों को घर में किसी को कोविड हुआ था किसी को परेशानी हुई थी वैक्सीन के बारे में क्या आप सुन रहे हैं कि अभी जो वैक्सीन चल रही है वो वैक्सीन कब मिलेगा कैसे मिलेगा आप लोगों को हम लोगों को नहीं पता है इस चीज के बारे में किसी ने जानकारी नहीं दी आपको कोई जानकारी मिली है हमें नहीं कोई जानकारी नहीं मिली लेकिन जो हम बताते हैं न्यूज चैनलों में की कोविशील्ड है को वैक्सीन है दो तरह की वैक्सीन है तो उसके बारे में अभी कोई आइडिया है की आपके बुजुर्ग माँ बाप को वैक्सीन मिलनी चाहिए नहीं मिलनी चाहिए मिलनी चाहिए जरूर मिलनी चाहिए हमारे घर में मामी हमारी एक्सपायर हो गई थी इसी चीज की वजह से जी अच्छा तो वैक्सीन को आपको लगता है कि ये आपको जो है आप अपने बुजुर्गों को देंगे घर में जी हाँ देनी चाहिए ओके सो यर इज समबडी हु एक्चुअली लॉस्ट अ रिलेटिव टू कोविड बट दे डू नॉट रियली हैव इनफ अवेयरनेस अबाउट वेयर टू गेट दीज वैक्सीन फ्रॉम वॉट आर दी स्टेप्स रियली दैट आई पेशेंट्स ऑलरेडी गेटिंग कॉल्ड फ्रॉम दैट पेशेंट Especially for those who come from really poor backgrounds or low income groups and are not aware about the options. True. Aven building awareness is a very significant task and it's a good question that you ask. I was observing your interviewing these nice people who have gathered outside a very large hospital. Now, when you sample a population, when you look at people who visit a hospital, they are more likely to be aware of the disease and its treatments. So the, the sample, the sample of the people that you that you interviewed are more likely to know about it. But it doesn't seem like they have a lot of knowledge about this about this vaccine or about yeah. the disease in general. So clearly, we need to do more. And I'm sure that uh, people like yourself will be able, and programs like this will be able to help um, get this message out to the public. Remember that the general public are not well versed with medical terms. So when we communicate with them, we must really, really talk in layman terms. For example, this is a disease that is causing death because of lack of familiarity. And vaccines build that familiarity without the risk of disease. So when the virus attacks you, hmm. your body knows how to, how to counter it. And that is how you escape disease. I think if we talk in simplistic terms, people will understand this better. And as you rightly said, and as one of the participants also mentioned, their parent or close relative passed away from COVID. My condolences. And uh, this happens, this mm. has happened all over the world, and this happens to older people. If you take all the risk factors, Dr. Amrinder Singh mentioned, age is the number one, mm. number two, and number three risk factors. All other comorbidities are way down in the rank. So age is a top risk right. factor. If you are, say, 80-year-old, your risk of dying is about 200 times than that of a very young person. So 
uh, if you catch the infection that is so which is why we prioritize the oldest people or the, the most senior individuals mm. and also like uh, dr singh said uh, to um, you know those with comorbidities which means that long standing diseases like uh, like the uh, like what dr mentioned dr jayadevan it's interesting you talk about this age graph demographic debate i'm going to talk about it a little more but before that the slum area is showing high sero prevalence why not go and inoculate people in the high rises instead who may be transmitting the disease more than people in rural areas to you know the slum areas there are a couple of issues with this with this question the first is when you use a commodity such as a vaccine which is a limited resource we must traditionally by convention use it both for maximum leverage leverage means getting the maximum benefit out of a limited commodity now what is the benefit that we are hoping to achieve the benefit is longevity that is if a person gets a disease he or she should not become severely ill or die now the segment of the population where this outcome is more likely to happen is the older and the comorbid group now younger people can also die from it in fact a 25 year old can die from it but the odds that a 25 year old will die from it is about 1 in 10 to 15000 whereas the odds that an 8 year old person could die from it is about 150 for every 1000 you see the difference so it is the because if you take all the people together we must use this resource first among those who are more likely to die now in terms of the second part of the question was you mentioned about zero prevalence for the for our viewers i'll explain what that is if you if you uh, do a blood test on 100 people and you test if they have antibodies to this virus that is called zero prevalence now in general areas that have been infected by this area by this virus will have a zero prevalence in the range of 15 to 45% in india the most recent okay. zero prevalence survey in kerala done by icmr was about 14 to 17% now in uh, as okay. you as you rightly showed from the graphs there are areas with 45 and even 55 zero prevalence there are there are problems with zero prevalence mm. for, for one thing the zero prevalence is not an accurate measurement because the percentage can okay. drop with time antibody levels traditionally drop with time and at the end of 3 months sometimes they may turn negative on the test in the body there will mm. be antibodies but the ability of the test to pick it up will be negative so that is why many zero prevalence studies will underestimate the Uh, the impact of the disease in the population so that is that's a limitation of using right. zero prevalence the third problem is in areas where they had severe infection there are parts of the mm. world where the disease is coming back uh, in a bigger format all right so which is why i said this pandemic is not a single uh, single hill where you climb up and climb down it is not like that it is a mountain range there will be okay. several waves and the virus really does not follow a human narrative so we need to be prepared for the long term and the only way that we have to remain prepared in the long run is to vaccinate okay dr jayadevan thank you very much for explaining all those points and sharing those insights with us appreciate you joining me on the show